Good morning, Carolyn Howe, oh. headmistress at Bedford Girls School uh, Junior. Yeah. Uh, and we were just hearing a little bit about um, if there is such a thing, a typical day at <laughs> at BGS. <laughs> can you can you walk us through it again? Yeah. I'll, yeah. Sure. Um, so I, I think really, you know, it's it's always a busy day at Bedford Girls sure. School. There's always something happening. Um, to give an example, we've got Year Fives going out in their class groups to visit Bedford archives today. Um, oh, but I, I think. Um, you know, what's really important for us is we have that touch point with our class teacher right at the beginning of the day just okay. to help the girls settle in, give them some time. If they've got any worries or if they need to get anything, a bit of help getting things organised, then they've got that time to do that. Then they might be dashing off to a games lesson, music, Spanish, uh, dance, um, or they might be staying on and having a class lesson with their class teacher. Um, mm -hmm. and, and then we revisit again. So once they've had the end of lesson one, they're back again with their class teacher, uh, maybe have some longer form time or go to an assembly or something like that. And then the, the timetable just sort of continues in that way. Absolutely. Um, yeah. But that central point, the class teacher sounds to me a very important role in their lives. So they're, they're whizzing all around the place, but that, that is their sort of... The new yeah. And I think um, our, our head of year three often says to the girls, I'm mum. You know, when you're in school, I'm mum. I'll be your yeah. mum while you're here. Because it is. Their, that's their job is just to sort them all out and make sure they've got all their things and they know where they're going. And, you know, the, the, the smallest yeah. things can be quite a big worry for, for young children. So it's important they've got that person to come to. For sure. And I think it's, it's, it's stretching their independence within the confines of feeling really safe and solid, isn't it? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and particularly since they've all spent so much time at home, have you noticed a, a, a sort of dynamic change, I guess, in, in the children now they're back, but also have yeah. a very... Yeah, very... They've, actually, they've, they've been amazing. I think, first of all, when they first came back, they were forgetting sort of some of the classroom routines because I think they were quite used to sort of like, oh, I'll just go and get a snack yeah. <laughs> or I'll just go and get a drink. Um, but, you know, I, mean, I think children are incredibly resilient. Um, and I think... Uh, they actually really enjoyed being back. And I think having that um, independence really helped build their confidence again. Uh, yeah. So they, they, we found that they just slipped into, you know, the school routines and school life really, really quite quickly, actually. So I think it's harder for the parents. <laughs> yeah, definitely. And how do you think girls benefit from being educated in, in an all-girl environment? Um, I know it's an age-old argument, but I'm always interested to hear what your, your, your views are on that. Well, I mean, I think more than anything, they're free from the gender stereotypes um, and they can just be themselves. And I think that's really important. Um, uh, you know, for us, the best, uh, the best mathematicians are girls, the best scientists are girls. Um, and they have those really positive female role models in their lives. Um, and I, I think we are about educating girls particularly. Um, we want them to aspire like some really amazing um, female leaders, so we'll have a lot of uh, inspirational women coming in to talk to us. Um, but I think also um, our, our whole sort of structure of the school is set up around the way girls like to learn. So, for example, you might find in a boys' school, they might have 35-minute or 40-minute lessons, whereas here, you know, we look on, in, you know, every lesson is an hour long because I think girls can be quite self-regulated, perhaps at a younger age than boys can be. Yeah. Um, they enjoy um, self-directed tasks. They gain a lot from collaborating with each other. So I think our whole model of education really supports the girls in the way that they like to learn. And, and interestingly, you said as well about sort of that feeling emotionally safe. Um, I, think, I think when you're learning, um, we need to encourage our children to know that it's okay to make mistakes and actually yeah. asking questions is a very important part of learning. But I think there's a certain vulnerability that goes with that admitting I don't know something or admitting I don't know something yet. Mm. And I think, again, in the all-girl environment, they, they get that sort of emotionally safe atmosphere in their classrooms. Mm. And it's such a formative age, isn't it, that the, the age group you're looking after. I mean, there, there are such foundations set, I think, at, at, at the sort of prep school level. Yes, uh, absolutely. And I think... Um, you know, every piece of research you read about um, how people go on and um, have really fulfilled adult lives, so mm. much is to do with what happens in their younger years. They're very, very formative. Um, sure. and I think that's why we really very much believe in building confidence, building, um, you know, as, as an IB school, we have the learner profile. So there's 10 attributes of good learner, uh, of being a good learner. But actually, there are 10 attributes that you would want 
um, to, to have as an adult anyway. It's kind of like our ultimate goal is to be caring, knowledgeable, thinking, well-balanced, you know, and, and all of those attributes. Yeah. Well, you've led me beautifully onto my next question, Karen. So thank you. I'd love to know just a little bit of background around your, your decision to, to take on the IB in primary years. Um, yeah. The International Baccalaureate, for those who aren't familiar. Um, okay, so it's uh, so I think you know we are we're a new school really. We only really we're only ten years old, um, and really we had already transformed our curriculum. So I think when two schools came together in the way that they did for mm -hmm. us, um, we had to sort of jigsaw puzzle a curriculum to get us through those years because you would have children who would have learnt something, you know, I'm thinking back to topics, so maybe they learnt about the Tudors in year three but at one school, but then they learnt about them in year five in another school. So there was this, when I started, there was a bit of a jigsaw puzzle um, and we had a very disjointed uh, and disconnected curriculum. So mm. we'd already been on a journey of, um, uh, of moving away from that and making our curriculum much more skills-based and much more thematic. Um, and we came to... the the idea behind doing that was to build independence, to build in more inquiry, um, to give the pupils more say, more choice, voice and agency in their learning. Um, and yeah. when we came to review that four years down the line, we felt that we had achieved many of the goals. But one of the things that we wanted to look a little bit more about was about developing that in inquiry and independence. And really, IB was a very natural next step for us. So it was almost, we'd almost been evolving that way anyway, I think, since 2014. Um, sure. So really, when we started to look at it in more detail in 2018 and then become a candidate school in 2019, we were very well placed and very much along the journey mm. already. So it wasn't a huge dramatic change for us. It was more about refocusing our curriculum. OK. And that obviously leads seamlessly on to them doing IB at, at sixth form and beyond, doesn't it? Is there an option? It probably sounds a really silly question, but is there an option to do A-levels actually at senior level or, or is there IB throughout only? Yes, no, they can choose. And I think that's really powerful as well, is to be able to choose. And um, so yep. really what we're doing in the junior school is PYP fits brilliantly with the primary, primary school model. Um, and, um, but I think uh, obviously when they, what we're trying to do is really um, embed all of those skills and those qualities as a learner that will take them through the senior years. And then um, as they go into sixth form, um, they'll hopefully enjoy... Um, and reminisce about their time in the junior school, but also have that understanding of what concept learning is about and, and remember how exciting and engaging it is. I think, I think for UK schools, for, for UK schools, the sticking point is that they have to take GCSEs at age 16. So you yeah. kind of have to go down the more subject-based, um, oh. more narrow route. Mm -hmm. um, but the idea is that, again, they can, you know, uh, sort of spread their wings a little bit more with IB in the senior school, if that's what they wish to do. So. Yeah. I mean, there's, uh, there's definitely a, a, an appeal to keep <coughs> education as broad as possible for as long as possible, isn't there? I mean, I think yeah. it's lovely to start sort of refining your knowledge base, but it, it, until you really have a proper foundation of all the subjects, it's quite difficult to make that choice. Absolutely, yeah. And I think, you know, and I think for, for us in the junior school, IB, the primary years programme is all about transdisciplinary learning, yeah. um, whereas at the diploma programme, it's interdisciplinary. So it's, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's a really interesting, but I think it just opens everyone's eyes, not just the pupils, but the parents as well, to maybe looking at education in a slightly different way and from a different perspective that isn't just driven by the UK political agenda. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> um, and Karen, <coughs> I think there is a, a typical uh, Bedford girls' school girl, or, or I mean, for someone looking at the moment and, and sort of considering their options, is, is there such a thing? Is there a typical girl that you're looking for? I, no, I, I don't think so, because I think we're all about the individual. Sure. <laughs> um, so, yes, it, the, it's not about sort of fitting square pegs into round holes. Um, and I think there is something here for every single um, individual pupil that comes here. And, and that's through our curriculum. It's through our co-curricular experience. Um, so there's a wealth of opportunities in the sport, in the music, in the drama. Mm. But also, you know, we have a strong academic background as well. So girls are really pushed on and engaged in that way too. So if their interests are down that route as well, then they'll be um, really challenged to enter competitions and take part in sort of more national events as well. So, I, yeah, no, I, I think we are um, very much about the individual and we'll, we'll encourage every individual um, to, to grow and develop in their own unique way.
And is it a juggle? I mean, you have got a, an amazing track record on academics. Um, and I guess that, that in itself does encourage, you know, encourage people to work hard and to get great results. Is it a juggle also um, ticking all the other, you know, extracurricular boxes? I think, um, no, because I think for us, we, we actually call our extracurriculum our co-curriculum. So we, it, it, it's sort of philosophy, philosophy yeah. it sits alongside okay. our curriculum. And uh, our co-curriculum is about developing those same skills that will, you know, and, and seeing the benefits of those skills in yeah. the academic work as well. Mm. Um, you know, and I think, uh, you know, we think about girls who might participate in a huge amount of sports, we recognize what does that bring back to the classroom when it brings, you know, confidence, it brings mm. leadership skills, it brings teamwork, collaboration. Um, and, and that's really how we view our co-curriculum. So, um, you know, it's, and we do look at that actually, we map out what skills um, each of our clubs is, is also promoting. Yeah. Um, so it's busy, but also again, I think we recognize that. So it's a long school day. Um, and so we are, you know, quite thoughtful about what homework we set. And I say that right the way through the juniors and the seniors. So we wouldn't set homework tasks for the sake of it. No. Um, and everything has to have a purpose because we know, you know, everyone has busy lives, yeah. busy co-curriculum, um, yeah. or maybe busy working parents. Yeah. And home, home should be home, I guess. So once they've Absolutely. had, yeah, they can have a bit of time to themselves. Yeah. Um, and, and what sort of percentage um, of your girls continue on into the senior school, BPS? I mean, and, and if, if they don't, what sort of schools are they going on to? But to be honest with you, um, I, I'd say the high 90% of, oh, really? you know, oh, sort of 97% of the pupils go from year six on to the senior school. And I think that's really because when, when they start with us, it, it's very much about a long-term engagement um, with, with the students yeah. and the parents. And they, they really are joining BGS for, for right the way through. We get some girls who maybe relocate. I think, again, we're very internationally minded school. Um, people might move on um, and they might choose to do it at the end of year six. It's, it's quite a natural point. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, most of the girls do actually say, and I think it's because we are very much one through school. So the girls that, you know, we have sick formers over here leading assemblies, running clubs, yeah. running playground buddies in the, you know, playtime. Sure. And I think, you know, it's very much one, one whole school community. Yeah. And presumably that, that promotes a, a family feel if you've got sort of siblings tracking them through the school. Do you, yeah. I've often thought at prep school level, you know, it's, it's an investment, not just for the individual, but it's, it's a huge part of family life, running a prep school. I mean, I imagine the community there with you is, is thriving. Yeah, I, I think, um, yeah, very much. I mean, that, that those relationships with parents are all important. And I think I quite often look at it as, as it's kind of like a triangle. So yeah. you've got the, the pupil, the parents, and, uh, and the school, the teachers, or, or myself. Um, well, and and we, we build those relationships incredibly well right from the start. Um, parent engagement is always really high. We have celebration of learning mornings. The parents come in. Um, it's not about watching their daughters in assembly. They come in and they get stuck in, in the classroom. They look at uh, the kind of things they've been learning about. Yeah. Um, and I think as well, you, you know, if, if we need to, we work with other professionals too as well. So it's about sort of looking outwardly from our mm -hmm. community and seeing how we can help every, every child and every family is unique. Um, mm -hmm. And we, we just make sure that we've got the right support or right, yeah, right help in place wherever we need to. And beyond the senior school, am I right in thinking that BGS is part of a group of schools? Uh, in the senior, uh, yes, so we are part of the Harper Trust. That's right. Um, and uh, there are four schools in the Harper Trust. So there's Pilgrims, which is a pre prep feeder school um, where the children come to us uh, from year three. Uh, then we have uh, Bedford School, yeah. uh, which is boys, Bedford Girls School, and then Bedford Model School, which is uh, co ed. And we have particularly strong links with Bedford School um, yeah. because I think we see the unique. Um, you know, all the benefits of an all-girls education and similarly they see all the benefits of an all-boys education. But I think we all recognise that boys and girls do need to learn to get on together. They need to learn to collaborate. They need to learn to work together. So we have a very strong programme um, with Bedford School. So every year group has um, at least one termly event uh, with their uh, year group in Bedford School. So um, lots, really lots of joint activities. Yeah, gosh, that sounds amazing. Um, and Carolyn, just to finish off, um, million dollar question, where, where do you see yourself in, in sort of five years time, both, both from a personal perspective, but also the school? 
I think, um, well, I think, so um, if I start with the school, yeah. um, I think, you know, we are really so proud to have been accredited as a, as a PYP school this year. Mm. Um, and I think on the back of that as well, we had a really uh, extremely successful inspection report in January 2020. And I think, if I, I think really for the school, we're just at this stage now where we are really taking off. As I said before, we're 10 years old um, and we really are very sure of ourselves and where we want to be. And I think, uh, you know, as BGS Junior School, we want to be really at the forefront of, of being a forward thinking um, school that's leading the way um, and, and so hopefully leading the way a bit with, with PYP. We want to learn from our other PYP schools as well and take on board all that, but just to be a really extremely successful UK-based PYP school. And um, personally, from my point of view, who knows? <laughs> um, but, but certainly whatever, it'll be leading in education. Um, yeah. You know, it's, it's always exciting here. Um, I've been here eight, nine years now, and I think we've, we've been through so many things um, in those eight or nine years, a very exciting journey so far. So um, either still here, but certainly still leading in education, whether it's here or somewhere else, I don't know. Fantastic. Well, exciting times. And I have to say, it's been really interesting hearing a little bit more about the IB at primary level, because that's, that's new to me. But so, thank you so much for your time, Carolyn, and um, really look forward to a visit when I'm allowed. Absolutely. Thank you. I'd love to show you around. Thanks, Antonio. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Bye. Bye. Bye.